we will continue, beloveds, with my purpose. And I was praying about it. But it was more about how to explain it in a way that is entertaining, captivating, and responsive to the questions people have that they don't know. Because if you sat down with God, you would not know. You were sitting down with God and you would not know if you had questions or what to do. Holy Spirit's always telling me, slow down. Now, so my purpose to explain how good God is, how I became me, how you became you, and what we're going to do as far as employing the God-given gifts of life to enhance your experiences and your moments, the important things. So in the beginning, God created my throne, this apartment, that bed, all right? That's my thought process. So I decided in the beginning, I wanted to be in this exact place, in this exact city, with these exact trees, <clears throat> the details, beloveds. And my wife did me a kindness a long, 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 long time ago. So repaying her for that has been a priority, along with Peter. Peter also made my, um, and still does, laughter become his laughter. And it's one of the delicacies of what humor was designed to be. So some of you will be able to keep up, others are gonna be, what is he talking about? And then I'm going to include why I should exist <laughs> and why it's a good thing for you. So I was getting my pure flicks on, <clears throat> watching these Christian movies. And thinking to myself, well, God's not dead. No, no God's not dead. But Well, first I had to think about myself and I said, well, I should have spiritual gifts, but in order to have spiritual gifts, there has to be the spirit. It's gotta be unseen, but tangible when it appears. So I was like, okay, we should have colors, <clears throat> <clears throat> building elements, and then eventually I'm gonna need some type of blueprint of why it exists, who created it. Okay. Languages, we'll need those. All right.
And then I'll separate the realms from the invisible to the majesty of walking around and the ground will become a different texture. And then from there, it could sink or it'll stay that way, okay? And there'll be this thing called water, right? So there's an expression called whatever floats your boat. Some would say, well, Lord, you need buoyancy. Others would say, um, water, a boat won't float on air. So it's gonna depend on the understanding that you receive, right? So then I took it that far where I was like, but there should be conversation. That will be enjoyable. What makes it enjoyable? The fact that there's a connection. What I was really praying about is how can they follow me if they can't hear my voice? I'm not thrilled with this whole um, people not hearing from me. So I said, okay. So I told them if they keep trying, then we'll walk together again. And the expense that comes with walking with someone. How can I make it enjoyable for both of us? Unless they understand the uh, gift that I came to bring 2,000 years ago. I always talked about it. I was watching one of the depictions of me, you know, that was more like me. And it says that whoever believed in him, he gave the right to be called children of God. And why it was so important to understand fully, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word from God. Now I have this new phone. I don't know if I like it. Spirit says I like it, so I go with that. So then I was thinking, okay, <clears throat> when I come down here, I'm gonna need a father. I am definitely gonna need a father. We need to be taught because I wanna walk in your shoes first. Before I open my mouth about anything that's going on, I wanna walk in your shoes. I didn't plan on coming down here and people were like, so where the hell were you in hell? Getting you out? Oh. And then I thought, <clears throat> but I also have to have a way to um, turn everything beautiful and positive, right? That was my whole thought process. So then I went back to, in the beginning, there was the word and the word was with God. So then I took the New Testament <clears throat> And I said, you will see me sitting at the right hand of the Father. So my existence, believe it or not, beloved, is I am constantly talking to the Father. I walk around like that. All we do is talk. And then in this season, I raised up to such a level, praying for my wife all the time, hearing her prayers, and that's why my um, prayer life really, really tripled because it, it took me to a, like a third heaven of um, <clears throat> I want to be playful with this, not lying to oneself. And the way I do that, I'm not going to get into, but I can hear her prayers and 
that's a level of intimacy that I only have <clears throat> with her as opposed to the um, intimacy I have with someone that simply is praying and then I answer the prayer. So she's way up there. And that's one of the rewards that I wanted to give her. And I was remembering we were in the um, van one time, the 99, and my wife is so smart that she said, well, if I drink all of this water, then I'll have to go to the bathroom and I don't want to get out of the van. So she didn't drink that much. But you guys say that's not too smart. I marveled at the fact she was even there. Like we've been through a lot. We were um, attempting to have a marriage, and this is in no way to hurt your feelings or anything, but I've been uh, really reflecting and praying and appreciating you. Outside of God's will, as far as the city we were in, <clears throat> Attempting to have a marriage in hell. Not pushing ourselves out as much as we could have. And then thinking it was going to be all fun and games. <clears throat> so I really have um, understood all of that. And pushed all of that out of my mind. And that's one thing I could do as well. A lot of this happened in your guys' marriages. And I had uh, prepared myself to rescue my wife because I drilled the undertow into me. <clears throat> that major cities have an undertow. Spiritually, it seems like it pulls you back in. And when I got out of one of the cities, I would talk to people and they were like, I'm never going back to that city. Like you, you get trapped there. So it was a real fight to uh, be able to get here, <clears throat> but I'm here for you. And then I started um, really thinking, okay, modern Christianity, especially in the West has always bothered me. So I just left it alone. After I uh, learned what I needed to learn. And I said, okay, it's a good thing to gather. I like that. <clears throat> I wish I could have found a church that was on a level that would be somewhat uh, more than reminders for me. But I also saw it as that's just not right. So I was like, okay, use it for three years, learn what you need to learn, learn the basics, and then you start learning with me. Then it's a good thing. It's an introduction to uh, the purpose of life in itself. Fellowship with me. <clears throat> and many decided they didn't want that. And I said, okay. What's happening right now and why it has to happen. Some things you need to know, some things you don't. But how to get you through your day. And everybody has come up with uh, their own way of getting through their day. Well, is it healthy? And then how I approached things. <clears throat> Because I didn't want to be all holier than thou. And I also didn't want to be, okay, he's a pushover because then you can't get anything done. Anybody in leadership knows you have to do certain things and set certain uh, expectations, beloveds. So the expectations were set in scripture. 
But who could have expected it this way? And one thing <clears throat> that I blessed myself with, because I think of the things of value, beloveds, I am able to actually feel when people are saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, and tears of joy, I feel it. So how much better would it be for you if you saw it? <laughs> so <clears throat> that's my goal. Give a lot of people tears of joy. And then, of course, I'm resting right now, getting my Billy Graham on. <laughs> so that's what my ministry is going to be focused on, tears of joy. And that's what I wanted ministry to be in the beginning. And in order to do that, I taught myself to be where I'm supposed to be, when I'm supposed to be there, with what I need to make sure that happens. I'm no longer interested in uh, fighting a war that no longer needs to be fought. Now I'm interested in restoration, recovery, definitely recovery, because there are also uh, things I want and uh, experiences I want to give my wife, Peter, and things I want back. So I would never have anything unless I made the attempt. So to give you your second wind, we'll have to start there. Because I was feeling somebody that's saying, I believe, I believe he's him. So I have Peter that believes I'm Jesus. I have Mary that believes I'm Jesus. I have other people that I can allow to believe I'm Jesus. And that's a good beginning. And Believe it or not, beloved, it's 2,000 years ago. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. People are like, that is the most mind-blowing statement I have. Seriously, like I, I had to explain it like that. Not talking down to anybody, just. So the Old Testament basically can be summed up as, hey, knock it off. No, no, because I was watching one of these Christian movies and um, I was noticing, kind of seeing it in the spirit, like this person, how can you do anything that you know has God involved in it and then be against it? Like 10% of me, do you know who you're messing with? And the other 90%. And that's what I'll do a lot of times when people are making their decisions against me. Right? What can I do in this situation? And one of the um, challenges is intervening or not intervening. So there's a lot more to me than people understand. I laid it out pretty uh, thoroughly in what um, I see as good and what I see as evil. When I thought to myself, they're gonna need to hear from me and there has to be a connection there. They have to know it's from me. So then I decided, all right, before I even let them touch the planet, I'm gonna put things there, like little clues. And I'll use those things for confirmation and there's gonna be these things called refrigerators. Now other countries, they may not have a refrigerator. 
depending on how they choose, because you do make a choice every single day of how you're going to view things. To look at things, that may be good, that may be... So... This um, new way that I'm telling you to approach uh, walking with me and ascertaining your own happiness in your own kingdoms isn't new. It's the way it's supposed to be. My prophets hear directly from me. And then you have the word of God. So you cannot be misled and then you know if it's from me. And I was really praying about this because I've seen some false prophets popping up on YouTube and it's bothered me because one person gave a word and I, was pr I didn't give him that word. I know for a fact, I was like. Whoa. And then taking it into the spiritual realm <clears throat> of uh, the familiar spirit. And I was like, he got a familiar spirit already. And Spirit said, no, he's just trying to help out. What? Why? I don't. In my name? Because the word didn't even sound like me. I was like, that's if I give one of those, what I've told you in secret, proclaimed from the rooftops words. I'm poetic. And then I thought, all right, some people, depending on uh, where they're at, in their life. Like somebody in the hood might think uh, rap lyrics are poetic. Somebody uh, from Cambridge, Chaucer, um, <clears throat> Emerson, they might think that's more poetic, um, depending on how you're speaking, right? So then I said, no, there should be written literature And when you read it, you just know. So we have that. So what I'm in essence saying, beloveds, you have every tool to be happy right now at this moment. All right. I love you.